Tanking is prevalent in baseball, but why is it tolerated? There's no crying in baseball, you unless you count the Major League Baseball Players Association bemoaning the death of the golden goose of free agency. But there is tanking, what else do you call teams that aren't actively trying to maximize their win total and are content jockeying for a high draft pick? Compared to the N visionary former Philadelphia 76 ERS general manager Sam Hinkey, who was hustled out of the NBA for competitive heresy, simply chose the wrong sport. In baseball, it's not tanking in baseball. Nope. The sabermetric set can feel free to deride me, but I still enjoy engaging with baseball through box scores. It's part ritual, video by CBS Sports. No sport is more easily distorted by short sample sizes than baseball. That's why a compet the Toronto Blue Jays, Baltimore Orioles, Miami Marlins, and Detroit Tigers are full on in the tank. The Kansas City luckily for the lethargic Red Sox, 40% of the American League East isn't even trying. The Blue Jays and the Blue Jays have some promising prospects such as Vladimir Guerrero Jr., but as is the want of MLB teams today, you and another tanking tool you there, stashing them in the minor leagues to prevent the accrual of service time toward free agency and ensure the preservation of another precious year of team control. Only the perpetually cash-strapped Miami Marlins and Tampa Bay Rays, the real money ball miracle of MLB without the movie, have lower payrolls than the Orioles who imported former Houston Astros assistant GM Mike Elias and Astros analytics guru Signature Mejdal, an ex-NASA engineer, to engineer their tank job. Who says tanking if we have the Astros and Theo Epstein's Chicago Cubs to blame for the virtues of tanking in MLB? By design, objectively, the tanking strategy is sound. So, the, que the NBA is so sensitive to tanking talk that it altered the NBA draft lottery format to reduce the odds of the team with the worst record getting the number one pick from 25% to 14%. Starting with this, the argument against labeling baseball teams as tanking is that baseball teams have minor league systems, and that distilling which draft picks toiling in the minors are capable big league players is much more time consuming and challenging than plugging in Kent Mississippi NBA or NFL draft picks. There's some truth to this, but the sheer unpredictability of prospect evaluations shouldn't render MLB teams immune from tanking blowback. The New York Knicks, owners of the NBA's worst record this season, aren't all that different from a baseball team trying to develop its young players and discern which ones are part of the future. The Knicks have some in other NBA teams condemned as tankers don't fit the narrative. The Phoenix Suns, yet, the stigma of intentionally stinking seems to stick to NBA teams and NFL ones more than it does MLB clubs. Could part of the reason for that perception gap be the racial makeup of the sports? Around 70, there seems to be some implicit bias involved when it comes to a gentler, kinder representation of prioritizing a long-term view in MLB. It's a double standard, even if tanking is more tolerated in baseball, its pervasiveness still creates a problem. If the imbalance between tanking and baseball is real, so, let's baseball's free passes should be limited to the ones issued on the field. Related slideshow, the 2019 MLB season provided by MNA.